Hello BookTube, hello friends, welcome to Lizzie Pay Loves Books, I'm Elizabeth and this is going to be a series review of The Coffee House Mysteries by Cleo Coyle. Now most of you know I am a big fan of Cozy Mysteries. I have several series ongoing that I've been reading for a while. I have a few series that I've been reading for a long time that I've kept up with and this year I just really wanted to make an effort to try to finish more series. Last year I finished a series which was the Cat in the Stacks Mysteries. I actually read it from beginning to end last year, mostly when Emily was in the hospital, and I did a series review and it seemed like it was a very popular video. Quite a few of you watched it and commented. So I decided I would really work hard to try to finish and catch up with several more of my ongoing series in the near future so that I can start to review them and then the books that I have on my shelf that are taking up space once I finish them and finish that series then I can move those out of the way and make room for more. So I recently finished The Coffee House Mysteries and I want to tell you a little bit about it. The Coffee House Mysteries has a, a different feel than most of the cozy mysteries that I usually read. Of course there are a lot of different types of cozy mysteries but I would say that the majority of them are probably probably set in a small town. So that alone makes this series very unique because it is set in New York City. And that being said, I think that makes the feel and the personality of this series just of course more urban and also more maybe more modern, more upbeat, uh, definitely more steamy, what I would consider racy and graphic. Not to the point where it, it's not a cozy mystery, because it is, but when I say graphic, I mean there are definitely scenes where people are having sex. They don't really get graphic with the details of it, but it's enough that you know, left to your imagination, you know exactly what's happening. And there are jokes about sex. It's just brought up in every installment. So I don't find that to be true in a lot of other cozy mysteries. So in this particular series, I would say that's what I like the least about it. I mean, I am very old fashioned, prudish if you will. I am a Christian, so I enjoy quite a few cozy mysteries that have a Christian base as well as many that don't, but I like to have a little more innocence in my sleuths <laughs> and in my books in general. So the fact that these are a little steamier and have a little more innuendo is not something that I love about the series, but it's there and I can live with it. I can still enjoy the series. and and know that that's there. So if you have not read the series and you are opposed to that, then just know this may not be a series for you. So let me just give you a little bit of a synopsis, a little bit of information about the series as a whole, and then I'll go through each book and just kind of give you just like a one sentence thing about each book, and I'll try really hard not to give spoilers except for in the overarching story, there are some things that happen that you might not want to be spoiled about if you're already reading the series, but I'll try really hard not to do anything that I think you wouldn't already have figured out if you've started reading the series. Does that make sense? Cleo Coyle is actually the pseudonym for a husband and wife writing team. Her name is Alice Alfonsi and his name is Mark Saracini and they have been writing this series together since the early 2000s. I think the first one came out in 2003. Currently there are 18 books in the series and I think they are continuing to write more as far as I know. The most recent one was just released I believe in December of 2019. So it is an ongoing series still but since I worked so hard to get caught up and I have all of them checked out right now. At least I own a lot of them and I have the rest of them checked out from the library. When else am I going to have a chance to show you all the books at one time than right now? So that's why I want to go ahead and review this series for you. So let me just kind of give you the rundown of the characters. This is set in a New York coffee house. 
our main character, Claire Cosey, is, I think when the series starts out, she's 39, and she has a daughter who has recently moved out on her own. She was married to Matteo Allegro, and back when they were married, she worked for her mother-in-law in her mother-in-law's coffee house called The Village Blend in what is described as a landmark location, or it's a landmark coffee house in New York City, I believe in Manhattan, and it's been there for many years. So she worked for her and learned, I believe she learned how to roast coffee and to bake and things like that from her grandmother. But then when she married Matt, she learned a lot of things from her mother-in-law and became basically a master coffee roaster. So when her and Matt divorced, she moved out to New Jersey and was trying to make it on her own with some different careers. She tried writing. She wrote for different publications. She did, I think, maybe some catering. I'm trying to remember now. This is all backstory. So she, you learn all about this when you read the first book. She talks about how that her mother-in-law, who she refers to as Madame, uh, she's got a like a four or five names in her name, but uh, she, Claire refers to her as Madame. Her and Madame are still close, and so Madame calls her in New Jersey and says, I need you to come to New York. So when she gets there, she invites her to come back and manage the Village Blend and to live in the upstairs apartment above the Village Blend, which is a two-story walk-up in Manhattan, which I guess is a big deal. I've never been to Manhattan. You know, they make it sound like this is a pretty big deal to be offered this kind of a job and a place to live right in the heart of Manhattan. So she decides to do it. But what she doesn't know until she gets there and has already signed on the dotted line that her ex-mother-in-law has also given her son free run of the apartment to stay there when he is back in the States. He's the coffee buyer for the Village Blend, but he spends most of his time on the road. Maybe one week of a month he is there, and she doesn't realize that until she's already moved in. So there's some friction there because she doesn't really want to have anything to do with her ex-husband. He was a cheat. He was a drug addict, and he has turned his life around now he's been clean for a while but she still does not want to get back together with him she's not interested in that he's the father of her child who is now grown and now apparently they're going to be business partners in the village blend because the mother-in-law has set up her will so that they will both take over the blend when she's gone and then eventually leave it to their daughter who is her granddaughter. So that's the backstory. So we get there and of course this is a mystery series so there's going to be a murder in each book and I will tell you about the first one here in just a minute but just to kind of introduce you to the other characters their daughter her name is Joy. Joy is my least favorite character. She's about 20, I think, when the series first starts, and she ages a little bit. The, the series, I think, goes for a few years. I'm not sure exactly the time frame, but their, the relationships, well, her relationships change all the time. She's kind of a wild child. Uh, I don't know if it's because of her father or, or why, but she does experiment with drugs in in some of the, the books and um, she also has kind of a I don't know she sows her wild oats let me just say that and I don't really like reading about her I just I feel like Claire I mean she's a mother so she's proud of her but I feel like she does not do enough to try to discourage some of this bad behavior and maybe, and they explain it in the book, you know, it's like, well, what do you, what can you tell her? She's over 20, so, you know, she's not a kid anymore. She's an adult. She has to make her own decisions. And yeah, 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 I get all that. But I think if I was in that situation, I would still not be very quiet about all of the things that Joy gets herself into. I just, I couldn't, I wouldn't. So, and not that Claire's quiet about it, but she doesn't do as much as I would. 
let me just put it that way. And that might be a good thing, but anyway, so we have Joy and then the mother-in-law. The mother-in-law, Madame, is one of my favorite characters. She's great. And she is set late 70s, maybe somewhere in her 70s, and, uh, and just a fantastic character. Just really a very, very classy. And then we have the other baristas that work at the coffee house. Now, in the first book, the assistant manager is the one that's murdered. So, we meet, uh, we have to have a new assistant manager in the next book, and that is Tucker. Tucker is a playwright, an actor. In fact, most of the characters, most of the baristas are an artist of some type. So, we have Tucker, and, uh, and then we have Esther. I think Esther also uh, helps with the roasting. She is a very good barista and is also a very good character. She is a poet, and at some point in the series, she starts having poetry slams in the coffee house upstairs. She even gets a Russian rapper for her boyfriend, and his character is funny. So. Uh, Esther is a great character. Then we have Dante. He's also one of the baristas. Dante is an artist or a sculptor or something. Uh, maybe a painter. I can't even remember. He's an artist of some type. And then at some point in the series, about halfway through, there's a couple of others that join in. Because, you know, natural attrition, you're going to have some coming and some going. You can't just expect the same exact characters to be there in the beginning all the way through the end. That's just not real life. And so then these people all work at the coffee house and Claire is their boss. And then Madame is her boss. She's the owner, but Claire is the manager. And then Matt, or Mateo, is the coffee buyer. So that's kind of how you have it set up. Now, we also meet some various police detectives throughout the series. Mike Quinn is the main one. When uh, we first meet Mike in the first book, and at that point, Claire is a little bit attracted to him, and he is maybe a little bit attracted to her, but he is still married at that point. We do eventually meet his wife, who is soon to be ex-wife. She's a piece of work, I tell you. And... Uh, he's in the process, uh, I think when the series opens, he's already separated and in the process of getting divorced and eventually, in a couple of books, he's divorced and then he and Claire eventually start dating. So, that relationship continues to evolve throughout the series. So, then we have several other detectives. There is a detective named Manny Franco and he eventually is going to get in a relationship with one of the other main characters, but not right away. We also have a couple of female detectives, uh, Bass and Souls. They come in and out. They're good, strong female characters. So there are there is a good police presence, and I think that's all of the regular characters. Now, just to give you a, a few other little tidbits about this series, I listened to the first 17 of these on audio, and I have a lot of them on my shelf. I own several of the first few in paperback and then I even have a couple of hardcovers one of them I got new at book warehouse and I have a couple of others that are library discards and then I have some checked out from the library so I've got all of the books from the series right here with me today to show you but what I started out to say is I've had quite a few of these on my shelf and when I started listening to them on audio, I don't know if I ever even cracked open one of the books. I would just hold up the books in videos to show you, but I never really looked in the books to see that, yes, there are, in fact, recipes in the back of all of the books. So several of the things that are talked about in the books are there in their recipe form so that you can try to recreate them yourself. And several of the books even have tips about different things. Like one of them has tips about being your own barista. One talks about how to cold brew at home. And one talks about how to make espresso without an espresso machine. Things like that. So there's a lot of really good information. And then another thing that I didn't even realize I was missing 
are the acknowledgments. Those are not included in the audiobooks either. I like to read the acknowledgments, and before I get rid of these, I may go back and read all of the acknowledgments in the books that I listened to on audio, which was all but one, because I really do enjoy reading acknowledgments in books. So some audiobooks will include the acknowledgments, and some will include the recipes. Like if you've ever read any of the Hannah Swenson books, those recipes are dispersed throughout in between the chapters, whereas these are all at the back. But in the Hannah Swenson books, the recipes are read in the audiobook right along with the rest of the story, but they are not read in the audiobook. So if you're like me and you've only listened to these on audio, just know you're missing out on some really neat sounding recipes. There's falalala latte and various baked goods and coffee drinks and things like that, especially one of the Christmas ones. Uh, um, the Christmas book called Holiday Grind has a full 70 pages of recipes for coffee drinks and baked goods and how to be your own barista. I mean, all that kind of stuff. 70 pages. And that's amazing. Okay, so I want to just go through each book, tell you the title, and maybe just one sentence about it. And like I said, I'll try to not give away much, but there's a couple of these that just by telling you the main gist of the story, it's going to kind of give away a little bit of the overarching storyline, but I'll do my best to do as little of that as possible. So the first book I already showed you. It's On What Grounds, and I already mentioned that in this book, the assistant manager of the Village Blend is the one that's murdered. So Claire has just recently taken over as manager, and we find out a little bit about the previous manager and why Madame wanted Claire to come back, because she talks about how she tried a string of different managers and the most recent one stole from her. So Claire gets involved in not only trying to figure out who murdered the assistant manager, but she also gets involved in trying to recover the items that were stolen by the previous manager. So this is a good book. It's a really good introduction to the series, but I will tell you, you don't necessarily have to start at the beginning. Uh, now, Melinda, from Two Boys Scrapping, I know you're going to say, don't tell people that, because Melinda and I both like to read things in order. I definitely recommend reading things in order, but the author gives you enough background in every single book that you could jump in anywhere and not be completely lost. You really could. I wouldn't do it, because that's just not me, but some of you don't mind jumping in wherever, and in this series, you could. There is one overarching storyline with Claire and her relationship with Mike Quinn, which gradually blossoms over time. But if you know that going in, you can you can figure out where you are in that relationship at any point. So that's that's all I'll say about that. Now the second book is Through the Grinder. And one thing I forgot to mention is that in almost every book, maybe every book, there's a prologue that actually shows you the murder. The prologue is written from the perspective of the murderer. You don't know who it is, but it just gives you some clues as to their motive. It gets you in their head a little bit. So in this book, in the prologue, we see the murderer pushing someone in front of the subway. And, of course, we don't find out until the end who it is. And I think also someone else gets pushed off of a building in this book. Uh, there's a very pushy murder in this book. There's also a dating website. I can't even remember. I think someone has encouraged Claire to try this dating website because at this point Mike Quinn is still married. He's separated from his wife and he's starting a friendship with Claire but they do not start dating until he is divorced. So in this book someone has encouraged Claire to try out a dating website. She also goes to a speed dating thing and it almost seems like they host it there at the Village Blend. And I want to say that it's her daughter, Joy, that talks her into doing that. So there's that kind of interesting aspect of it. So this is the second book, Through the Grinder. So book three 
is Latte Trouble. And in this book, we have Fashion Week. And in this book, we feature a jewelry designer who has designed some Java jewelry. And I think she wants Claire to host her opening and do the coffee for her reveal of this jewelry line and someone is poisoned and it happens to be someone that Tucker the assistant manager just broke up with so he of course is accused because you know he's got an axe to grind and Claire has to clear him so that's the gist of this one latte trouble in the fourth book murder most frothy Claire is invited to a millionaire's home in the Hamptons to run a coffee and dessert bar at a large party for the rich and famous and so while she's there someone is murdered in the upstairs one of the upstairs rooms someone has shot from outside like a sniper type shooter and the person who was shot happens to look very much like the millionaire and they were using that millionaire's bathroom so Claire thinks that it was actually the millionaire who was the target not the person who was shot but nobody knows for sure so Claire has to work on that mystery while she's there of course and so it's a little different because it gives you a little different setting which makes things interesting you know kind of spices things up a little bit and that one is murder most frothy book four book five is decaffeinated corpse and this was kind of funny in the beginning because they're talking about trying to make a good decaf well of course most of the baristas and the people that are affiliated with the coffee house think that there's no such thing as a good decaf Matt is the coffee buyer and he has learned about a botanically grown decaffeinated coffee so it's decaf from the ground up and somehow he's able to get some even though it is like a very exclusive thing and so there's a mystery centered around this and I think someone is murdered because of it so the title decaffeinated corpse is very appropriate for this book and then book six French pressed is probably my least favorite book because it's mostly about joy and her shenanigans she gets an internship at a French restaurant and then she proceeds to have an affair with the chef who is married with children so you can see <laughs> that's just one of the reasons that I'm not a fan of joy but anyway the story proceeds um, and there's a young man who works at the restaurant that joy is friends with and she goes to his house and finds him dead so then joy is the one that's accused because she's the one that found the body so Claire has to help clear her daughter's name and it doesn't help that she's been having an affair with the head chef number seven is espresso shot now you might notice a bride here this is not Claire getting married but in this book her ex-husband Matt is getting married for a couple of books now he's been dating a woman who is a publisher of a magazine I think or a newspaper some sort of she's a publisher of something and so she's a big deal and she likes how Matt looks on her arm basically and Matt's fine with that so in this story they ask Claire to run their coffee and dessert bar at the wedding and Claire who has no interest in getting back together with Matt at all is certainly happy to help Matt along his way to another relationship but she kind of sees that Matt may do the same thing to his new wife that he did to her so she's concerned a little bit about that but it all comes out okay in the end and this is number seven espresso shot in roast mortem which is book nine madame takes claire to visit a friend of hers who has a cafe and they are have gone down in the basement to maybe to to see their wine collection or something and while madame and her friend are still there claire goes upstairs for something and while she's upstairs a bomb goes off and sets the building on fire so madame and her friend are trapped below and the 
FDNY is called in in this book and we get to see a good bit of them in this book and the authors do thank them for their service of course in real life and so it's kind of a, an ode to them in a way. Uh, Madame and her friend are able to get out and are hospitalized. The friend is hospitalized for a little bit longer. There is a mystery involving this and Claire thinks that this was that this fire was set on purpose. She's really the only one that thought it was a bomb until it's investigated. The fire department is, you know, not sure how the fire started. So Claire is out to solve this mystery and then I think some other murders happen and so it goes from there. And this one is called Roast Mortem. Book number eight is the one I mentioned earlier that I may keep. This is Holiday Grind. This has so many good sounding coffee drink recipes that I'm probably going to hang on to this. This is a book that I bought at the book warehouse. So um, a lot of these paperbacks especially that I own, I'm going to try to turn them in for credit at the used bookstore once this pandemic is over and everything has opened back up. But uh, they don't sell a lot of hardcovers, so I may just hang on to this one. So in this book, number eight, Claire finds a Santa murdered. That's the main story of this and begins to solve the murder. It is someone that she knew, and so she sets about to find his killer. In book 10, Murder by Mocha, Claire discovers that someone is using beans from the village blend to make an aphrodisiac or a love potion and it's pretty lethal so she sets out to get to the bottom of this and that's the main gist of this one. Number 11 is Brew to a Kill and in this book they decide to open a coffee truck. Food trucks are all the rage and so Claire and her employees decide that a food truck would be a great idea because they could set it up in one neighborhood and if it doesn't work there then all they've got to do is drive it to another place until they find a good spot. Well there's another food truck or a coffee truck that is in direct competition with them and this particular truck seems like it's just always in the way and the owner of the truck is not the best person and I think she's the one that ends up getting murdered so it goes from there. Next we have another holiday book. This is book number 12, Holiday Buzz and in this book we've got a cookie swap and Claire discovers one of the bakers has been bludgeoned so she sets out to try to solve that mystery. As I recall in this story there is a good bit of blackmail mixed in with the murders. I can't remember all of the details. We also meet a new uh, one or two new baristas in this book as well. This is also a holiday theme but I think this one was really light on the holiday theme as I recall and there's no more Santas getting murdered and stuff in this one. I didn't read either of the holiday ones at the holiday time and it was fine. You know, it's always nice to read holiday themed books at holiday time, but if you just want to read through the series and you don't want to have to stop and wait for Christmas to read this one, it's totally fine just to go ahead and read it whenever you get to it. The next one, which is book 13, is one of my favorites. Probably my second or third favorite. It's called Billionaire Blend. This one was really interesting because it features a billionaire who comes into the coffee shop regularly and quizzes Claire on her coffee knowledge. Well, we find out later why he's doing that. He wants to hire Claire and Matt to put together a billionaire blend of coffee for some kind of big exclusive billionaire event that he's involved in and so he wants only the richest most exclusive beans to be included and he wants it to be amazing and all of that so that's part of it I can't even remember now who gets murdered in this one but I did find this story very entertaining Book number 14 is Dead to the Last Drop. Now the setting changes in this one. So let me give you a little spoiler. This one takes place in Washington, D.C. I don't want to give you all the details. Claire does go to Washington, D.C. for this book. It does involve the president's daughter and the Village Blend opens a location in Washington, D.C. and they start some kind of, I don't know if it's an open mic night or just a night where singers can come and so this involves the president's daughter and her sneaking in and 
singing under an assumed name and all of that stuff. So it's really interesting. I liked the change in scenery. I was a little bit worried that maybe we were going to stay there, but we didn't. We just, just for this one book. And uh, the authors work it all out, and I think what they did... Uh, after this was a great solution, but uh, I like this one. It was uh, it was very interesting, you know, involving the president's daughter and and we meet the president, and the first lady, and and all of that. Then the next one is Dead Cold Brew. There is a piece of jewelry that has coffee-colored diamonds in it, and there's a big mystery surrounding those coffee-colored diamonds, and that's all I'll say about that. But they're important enough that people are being murdered because of them. The next one I think was my favorite, Once Upon a Grind. This is a fairy tale book. There are all kinds of fairy tales represented and retold throughout the pages of this book. And I thought it was so clever. It was wonderful. It made me laugh out loud in some places. It was just super cute. And because it's a fairy tale theme, we have a lot less sex talk in this one. I don't know if that was intentional or if it's just because it's fairy tales, but I appreciated that about it. I didn't have to deal with all of the innuendo that I normally find in some of the books, but I did really, really enjoy this one. Someone asked me if you could read this as a standalone, and yes, I think you could. If you don't have plans to read the whole series and you want to just pick this one up, you might not appreciate all of the little things about it that relate to the characters if you don't know them but as I said earlier the author gives you enough backstory about the main characters that you could really pick up anywhere and you would be fine so this was my favorite the next one is the one that I just finished in April I had wanted to get this read in March but I just listened to it at the beginning of April this is book 17 and this was one of my least favorites because it was Completely opposite of this one. One of the things I liked about this one is that there was little to no sex in it. This one was just full of it and casual sex because it was about this dating app that encouraged people to hook up. And Matt, of course, was in on it. And by this point, uh, spoiler alert, he's not married anymore. His marriage didn't last, but he has moved on. And in this book, he is all about this dating app and it's all the rage so there seems to be something though that's not quite right about it and so Claire gets involved in that mystery and it goes from there and then the last one as of right now which is brood awakening is the first one I read in print I read this at the end of April it only took me about three days and normally it would take me a couple of weeks or more to read a book of this length one thing I really liked about it that I hadn't even realized because I've always listened to them on audio is how short the chapters are there's almost a hundred chapters but they're just two or three pages each and that was great because you could stop and start anywhere not that I wanted to this was a real page turner because this book is about memory loss at the beginning of this book Claire wakes up and she does not remember the last 15 or more years of her life she still thinks joy is maybe 11 and at home and she does not remember her relationship with Mike Quinn she remembers that she has gotten divorced from Matt so now at this point in the series her and Matt have a good working relationship and they're friends so when Matt shows up she's like what are you doing here I mean she just uh. so if you like a theme of memory loss this was really well done I thoroughly enjoyed it and I don't know anything really about memory loss but I thought that the authors did a really good job of writing this story so when this book opens Claire wakes up on a park bench and she doesn't know where she is and she does know and realize that she's in New York so she remembers that she used to work at the Village Blend she doesn't know that she is currently the master roaster there and the manager she just remembers that she had worked there when she was married to Matt who she is now divorced from she does remember that much so she goes there just to ask for help and when she walks in they're like boss where have you been she had been missing for a week and she has no memories of the last 15 or more years and so it's really good I think that it's very intriguing the, the whole memory loss issue and she finds out that 
she had been at a wedding cake tasting when she disappeared and she doesn't remember anything about that she's like well whose wedding was it who's getting married and eventually try to reveal enough and try to help her get her own memories back they don't want to just flood her with everything because they don't want to shock her so anyway I thought it was a great book I, I really did enjoy it and because there was memory loss there wasn't a lot of sex in this one either so bonus <laughs> for that <laughs> um, Anyway, th this is book 18. It just came out, I think, in December of 2019, and now I'm completely caught up with the series. And again, overall, I don't like the steam factor. Not that it has graphic scenes. It's just talked about, and it happens, and most of the time when it happens, the people aren't married, and that bothers me. So, you know, it is what it is, but the mysteries are very interesting. I like how the prologue gives you the murder from the murderer's perspective that's really intriguing and the characters are likable all except joy <laughs> and it's just uh, a good series so it's not my favorite favorite series of anything I've ever read but it's definitely enjoyable so anyway uh, that's really about all I have for the coffee house mystery series if you are interested in picking one of these up I would say start with the beginning but if you only just want to try one out then go for once upon a grind because it's definitely the cutest but uh, if you want to read about memory loss, then you could you could start with Fruit Awakening. The thing with this is that you're not going to know about all the things that she can't remember. And I think the author did a great job of not explaining all of that. She gives the readers enough credit to be able to know these things without having to explain everything in detail. So I did like that about it. So that's it. That's all for this video. Uh, let me know if you have read any of the series and where you are in the series. I know Melinda from Two Boys Scrappin' I think is about halfway through it. She did read some of these for March Mystery Madness and we were chatting about them. And uh, Melinda, I hope you don't mind that I went ahead and finished the series without you. We weren't buddy reading it, but you know we had chatted about it. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to you know get it done. And then the other big thing that drew me to this series is that I love coffee. I drink coffee just about every day and I don't have to have anything fancy but the coffee drinks that they talk about in these books make me want to go and try some more I'm definitely not a coffee connoisseur by any means but I do enjoy a good hot cup of coffee and I'm learning to like iced coffee that's what my daughter Katie will drink it started out I tried some frozen coffee and I like that and eventually I have worked my way around to trying some iced coffee but really just give me a cup of hot black coffee and uh, and I'm happy so that's all for this video I hope you are having a great day read a good book and God bless you